another edition of Cigar Chat. And over here today, I'm with my good friend, Reamer, a.k.a. Dr. Coffee. Right? <laughs> I nicknamed him that, by the way. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, my good friend is uh, a master coffee... Roaster. Roaster. But at one time, you were a grower, too. Right. In Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. Uh, which town? In Juntas, Puerto Rico, in the Ajuntas. middle of the island. Is that like a mountainous area? Right, it's uh, like 3,000 feet in elevation. It's it's uh, ideal for, for coffee growing. Wow. I so, guess that's why they say Costa Rica too is a very good place. Yes, right? yes. Actually... Because uh, of the rainforest? It's, it's uh, high and, and cool. Uh, rich soil. Uh, actually, uh, coffee was growing originally in uh, Africa, Sierra Leone. That's right. That's right. Some of the best, right? Some of the best. Right. And it was transported uh, to the Middle East, from the Middle East, then to um, to France, Europe, and then from there it came to the West Indies. Wow. And from the West Indies, it uh, kind of went all through central south america and that's how uh, the coffee came across. how it got developed um i know in cuba my grand my, my father i mean we, we were never in the coffee business but he would always say like we've talked before the coffee is all about the roasting is the most important part right. if you're going to do you got to make a really good roast dad, right. dad would always say that the high elevation was the secret to right good coffee. right because uh, the high elevation gives good quality fruit which is our cherries and those cherries are harvested. Wow. And a good quality coffee comes from the good, good uh, agronomic practices all the way to the roasting. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a process. It's yeah. a process. Timely. It's, timely. it's uh, very intensive. It's um, very delicate because you can ruin the coffee with uh, bad odors and wow. smells. With a bad roast, so with a with a bad roast, and also with a wow. with a wrong uh, processing, because the cherries need to be fermented and then washed and then dried, and afterwards very labor intensive. Yes, yeah. yes. So in the whole process, it's a delicate and continuous uh, process. So um, you can ruin a cough, a good coffee with a, a bad roast. Wow. You so how, how long, how many years do you think you've been doing this? Um, like, well, my family has been in the coffee business, so it's over 30 years. I definitely been involved oh, well, like uh, 20 years with the coffee since... Um, since you were a kid, really? Basically. Did your father also do coffee? Yes, okay. yes. My, so I know my you dad. told me that they, um, his family, which is very interesting too, is a Dutch family that settled in Puerto Rico. Right. And I think you said your father made fruit, fruit cake. Yeah, well, he did, did the citron, which is a uh, fruit used for uh, fruit cakes, for glazing, and then afterwards wow. it's it's uh, done for the baking and uh, fruit cakes. And I had never heard about this until until the rumor told me about this, you know, this uh, fruit cake. But, I mean, we joke about it here in the store. I go, right. I go, you know, first of all, there's really not that many Dutch people in Puerto Rico. I mean, <laughs> if you talk about, you know, St. Martin, Aruba, Curacao, right. those are the, the uh, help me out here. Um, Colonies. Yes, but they had a name. The Netherlands, they were the Netherlands yeah. Antilles. Right. Brain fart. But Puerto Rico, not too many Dutch people, right? I mean, when you were growing up? No, yeah. no, mainly in the San Juan area, but in just center of the island, mm -hmm where no many uh, people were um there were mainly corsicans and um corsicans wow yes the island and of corsica corsicans that's where napoleon was from you know? yeah now you want to hear a funny story about that napoleon was from an italian family and i'm just going to share this with you guys born in corsica So he, I think he was born the year that Corsica became part of France, mm -hmm. but he was from an Italian family. So his last name was really Buonaparte, and he okay. changed it to Bonaparte to make it more French. This is when I went to France. This is the Army Museum, and this is where Napoleon is uh, entombed. Here is a picture of his tomb, 
and he is in the rotunda at the Army Museum. But you know something, when I went to France, uh, I don't know, three years ago, I'm looking at all this uh, architecture. We went to the Parthenon. And I look and I say, man, this looks an awful lot like Italy, right? So apparently he did a lot of stuff in Paris, a lot of buildings and, and stuff that he had done. And a lot of the French people questioned Napoleon and said, why does this look so Italian? I mean, I, you know, he says, oh, no, no. He goes, I'm not making it look Italian. I'm just restoring Paris to its former glory. Wow. But really, it's got that Italian influence. I just thought that was kind of funny. You said Corsica. It just came up to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, going back to coffee, which is why we're here today. Um, let me just say this. My, uh, <laughs> my dad and my family in Spanish, they will say, Después de un buen eh, café, un buen tabaco. Definitely. Right? So in English, that means after a good coffee, I don't have to tell you guys, a good cigar. Cigar. Yeah. And uh, this is actually a Flor de Tampa, but I haven't put the label on it yet. But this is a phenomenal smoke. So make sure to get your Flor de Tampas with, hold on a second. Here it is. The new product that we are actually releasing today. Today. And it is made by my good friend, Reamer. Yeah. And I got to tell you, when you pull this out of the, the little... Um, basket that I have here I'm thinking in Spanish set that <laughs> you take it out of the basket God the, the aroma man it just it just hits yep, you I mean yep. it's just it's so rich the, the the coffee and that's how this whole thing got started guys um it's called its valve it's uh, called uh, the gassing valve I don't know if you can see it it allows the uh, co2 that produce that is produced by the coffee out but no oxygen in wow see because the oxygen obviously oxidizes the coffee and makes it taste bad okay eventually this allows only the the co2 to exit but no air to go in so it preserves the coffee preserves the how coffee. long how long can a coffee last like that well uh, good coffee could last easily uh, three four weeks at, at, at its optimum because wow. it's this way unless it's uh, sealed completely sealed vacuum sealed that basically paralyzes any process that it's going in the coffee well i guarantee you if i take this if i say the hell with the coffee i'm not going to sell it i'm going to just take it home this coffee's not going to last more than a couple of days at home because we drink a lot of coffee at the house my wife especially uh loves her coffee but this yeah. is phenomenal coffee it's not like um your grocery store bought right. this is more of a gourmet blend right uh i'll let him tell you guys because he's the expert yeah this is a gourmet blend it's uh it's a uh, unique because it's a uh, it's a crafted coffee and when I say crafted coffee it's not it's not roasted the traditional way with a specialized roaster this is pot roasted I mean okay this is literally an open pot you pour the uh, green coffee in and you start mixing <laughs> this is a boutique it's a boutique item because he's only making small batches right now I mean this whole thing started because we were drinking our coffee here and you know going back and forth and he told me about his knowledge with the coffee and then he said well you know I was thinking about making some. boom and he'd bring me some coffee so I said well why don't you just make your own coffee and I yeah. mean he hasn't it's, done this in years but here he is making his own coffee yeah which I think uh, is super cool it's unique and it has a very special flavor every bag has its flavor because it's small batches this is not a huge batch right which we're not making in. thousands here right, right. very right. small batches yeah. very small batches very unique very 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 fresh you won't get any fresher coffee than this this is roasted basically yesterday and it was packed today amazing so this is ready ready to, to really go to really enjoy it's a, a I'm actually gonna go ahead and brew some right now so you guys can see it this is called espresso because it's a rich, dark with roast, uh, roast yeah. with uh, a lot of uh, body. And if you have an espresso machine, 
it really presses the best out of it. I was going to ask you that because this coffee can actually be uh, brewed two types of ways. Right. Many, many ways, but primarily you said espresso, which is what we do here. Yeah. And the drip, right? The drip. You can regular also, coffee machine. You can also enjoy it in a regular drip. It takes a little bit more of, of uh, coffee per drip, like a tablespoon per uh, per cup of coffee. But you all, you can also enjoy it in your daily routine and um, fast going, fast paced. You can brew your own coffee very, very nicely. You don't have to just use an espresso machine. You can use the uh, regular drip machine. Excellent. Yeah. And here's the thing, guys. We're not gonna. <laughs> we're not in the business here to put. Bustelo or Folgers or any of these guys out of business, all right? No. We're just having some fun with this, and um, I know he loves doing this, and I mean, the aroma, my God, when you're doing this at home must be phenomenal. Yeah. Because I know that it's, when you bring it in here, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But um, if you guys want to try the coffee, I'm going to have it available starting today, and we're going to go ahead and uh, ship it with your order of cigars if you guys want, or if you come into the store, it's available here as well. Um, and like I said, it's small batch coffee, gourmet, Excellent roast, excellent flavor. I think you guys are going to really like it. That's why it's called Craft Coffee. I was kind of hoping you'd name it Dr. Coffee, but that's okay. Because for those yeah. of you guys that don't know, he is a doctor. So so I think that's another story but, <laughs> for another time. But, um, <laughs> but his hobby and his livelihood for some years in Puerto Rico was making coffee. So that's pretty cool. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, really, really enjoy it. I really appreciate you guys watching the video, and if you guys like the, the coffee, come here and see us or email us, um, and remember to hit like and subscribe on the video. And stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys the coffee, how it looks, and we're going to brew some right now. Okay. Here it is. It's all about the drip. Very good coffee, as you guys can see. It's hard to do this with one hand. Not a froth right here, huh? Beautiful. Very nice. Salute. Salute. Let's enjoy it. That's right. Salute. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Salute. Remember to hit like and subscribe to keep getting more videos. And if you like the coffee and you want to order it, hit us up.